So, and uh, hi there, uh, hi again. Uh, today I'm gonna tell you about GitHub Actions and uh, our experience of using them. Uh, but before we start, a little disclaimer, uh, English is not my first language. So if something will be unclear, feel free to just stop me and uh, ask any question or correct me or something like that. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Sergey Golovin. Uh, I'm a CTO at CSSR. Uh, and author of Remote Talk podcast. Uh, unfortunately, it's in Russia, but if you know uh, Russia, you can listen to it. And uh, I'm a huge uh, fan of open source, uh, and uh, here you can, uh, can see uh, some of my contacts at uh, GitHub uh, and Twitter and, uh, and Telegram. So if you will have uh, some questions after that uh, meetup or after that talk, uh, feel free uh, to just uh, ask uh, me some questions in Twitter or in Telegram. Uh, whenever you want. Um, and uh, a little bit about our company. Uh, CSR is a group of companies uh, established in uh, 2012 and uh, now headquartered in Singapore. Uh, we have more than 150 professional working, uh, professionals working together to achieve the best results. Uh, so, and uh, here you can see some of our clients. Uh, maybe some names uh, here are familiar to you. So, and let's go. We love GitHub and uh, we are huge fans of efficiency and uh, we believe that uh, everything what can be automated should be automated uh, be uh, because machines can do routine work better and more precisely than human beings. Uh, maybe unfortunately for us, maybe fortunately. So, and what the heck is GitHub Actions? Uh, so before uh, I start to tell you about our experience with the GitHub Actions, uh, I'll give you some useful definitions of uh, base terms. So, and the first one is a step. Step is just uh, one particular task uh, like npm test, uh, npm run lint, npm install, and uh, all steps uh, can be combined together in a sequence uh, to run them one by one. So the next one is action. Actions are individual tasks uh, that you can combine to create uh, jobs and to customize your, uh, your workflow. And the difference between um, a step and uh, an action is that action can be separated and you can share them uh, and can just reuse in different workflows in different jobs. So, and the job is um, sets or it's a set of uh, steps or actions uh, which uh, can be uh, run in, in parallel and it's uh, and they run in parallel by default but you can reconfigure it and run in uh, sequentially if you want to so uh, and uh, the most important thing uh, you can use uh, in github actions is actually workflow uh, because uh, workflow uh, combine all these terms together and it's a process uh, which can be triggered uh, by different events uh, uh, specified events like uh, on create pull requests on push and or or something like that or changing something in your pull request or in your code and uh, you can run several uh, jobs in your uh, one workflow and finally we have uh, a runner you can see a word uh, on the screen of uh, that laptop uh, a runner is a virtual environment which can run workflows just it so and it's a time for short demo. Uh, let me know if something goes wrong. I, I think uh, you can uh, see the GitHub page now. That's right? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, cool. So you can see here uh, a pretty simple project, uh, completely simple. So uh, here we have only uh, leap.test.js file and uh, it contains only a mocked uh, test which uh, will green uh, forever. So, and uh, in our package JSON, we can find only one uh, NPM script uh, called test, uh, which uh, only runs uh, just uh, just CLI tool to run our test. Uh, so, and let's try to add our our action in the empty repository without any actions. So you can uh, do it uh, by pressing uh, the, uh, the tab actions and choosing uh, whatever you want to choose. So, and here you can find 
many different actions for autom for different automations uh, for different languages like Ruby Rust or some uh, specific languages not popular like uh, Dana, for example. And uh, for some common automations like greeting for your pull requests, uh, labeler for your pull requests, and so on. So, uh, and uh, right now we need uh, Node.js workflow. So, and you can edit by uh, pressing set up this workflow button. So that's it. Uh, here you can see uh, familiar terms, uh, familiar uh, things like uh, the whole file is a description, is a configuration of our workflow of our whole workflow uh, and uh, here we can uh, see the name of that workflow uh, it's called like uh, node.js uh, ci uh, right now and here we can see some triggers uh, which will trigger our jobs and uh, we can uh, see uh, push and pull request for master branch uh, events so and uh, list of jobs uh, actually we have only one job here so and uh, it will run on ubuntu uh, with different versions of node.js uh, 10 12 and 14. so and uh, the next important thing is uh, our list of steps and uh, the most important here is uh, npm ci to install our dependencies and uh, this one is um uh, we don't need uh, this one because we don't want to uh, build uh, build our project. And uh, the last one we really need, it's npm test. So let's edit by pressing uh, start commit and uh, committing that, uh, this uh, configuration through GitHub interface. So that's it. So now we have, now we have, um, now we have a workflow here and we can see that uh, uh, some check is running now and we can just open it and uh, can see what is happening now. Okay, uh, let's wait a second and we can see here that our test uh, was here. So that's it. Uh, pretty easy, isn't it? So uh, we just um, we just have added uh, uh, one workflow uh, to run our tests and we can specify uh, how it will be how it uh, will run and so on. So let's continue. let's continue. Why did we start using uh, them? I mean, by them, I mean uh, GitHub Actions instead of other tools. <clears throat> Previously, our main workflow tools were uh, Travis CI, uh, Jenkins, and uh, GitHub. So, and uh, having different processes and different services forced us uh, to have a lot of uh, user accounts, uh, user settings, uh, project accounts, uh, project settings in uh, all of them uh, were in different places and the configs were in different formats. So it was a huge problem or not a huge, but it was uncomfortable for developers to set up a new workflow. So, uh, and we had to ask our DevOps engineers uh, to set up uh, a specific environment for almost every single project. So, and developers didn't control uh, those settings completely. So, and uh, if uh, they needed to rewrite something or to fix something, uh, they had to ask our DevOps engineers again to, uh, to fix it. So, and tighter integration of uh, those services with GitHub was a huge problem. Uh, every new integration required its own uh, unique settings. Uh, there was uh, no easy way to reuse automations uh, because when we use, for example, Jenkins, we need to uh, write some automations uh, specifically for Jenkins. And uh, if uh, some other team uh, used, uh, for example, Travis CI, uh, they needed to write their own automation, their own configuration. Uh, to automate it so and uh, teams uh, couldn't uh, uh, reuse uh, those configurations and those automations so now with github actions uh, we can keep all our workflow configs in one place and uh, following the documentation as code uh, concept uh, became easier uh, because uh, we have all configuration files settings special uh, utils for automations in one particular uh, place and uh, we completely control it right now our teams control uh, them and uh, can rewrite and so on uh, without uh, asking uh, somebody to do it so and uh, as uh, i said it, it became easier to configure workflows for every single project uh, because every single team uh, now can control all their automations uh, by their own 
and even what uh, is more important our developers uh, can uh, right now uh, their own automation they need and even share them because uh, when you have only one particular format to uh, write your automations and you can uh, store your automations in github uh, and uh, share uh, in the common way for all developers so it's uh, pretty uh, it's pretty good right now so uh, so what did we automate with these abilities so uh, the first uh, automation was uh, running tests obviously and linters because uh, it was pretty easy uh, as you saw previously so and uh, yeah that's it just uh, running tests and linters and maybe this is most important uh, part of automation every project so but we have different automations like um, pull request validation uh, it's pretty important because uh, previously our developers um, uh, had to uh, ask different uh, another, another developer to just fix uh, some mistakes some issues in uh, his own uh, pull request and uh, it was pretty common uh, like uh, for example uh, somebody uh, somebody just forgot to write some meaningful uh, title for pull request or meaningful uh, message uh, commit message uh, and so on so and we uh, have uh, some rules for our pull request and uh, now we can automate uh, checking of uh, the, those rules so and uh, moreover we can uh, generate staging and task links for uh, every particular uh, pull request for example we have uh, some pattern uh, for our staging uh, and uh, like that in in this example we can uh, generate by uh, taking the number of uh, the name of branch and uh, in our company um, we use uh, tasks id for uh, for naming our branches so and uh, we can just uh, generate uh, from template from a template our links so uh, also, we can use auto labeling. Uh, for example, it uh, it is pretty useful for uh, projects uh, where um, where many different uh, teams uh, uh, work with that project. So, and you can just uh, auto label uh, by some rules. For example, you can use paths uh, to uh, to to uh, use some labels for your pull requests like. I don't know, uh, for example, if you have a core a core parts of your library or uh, utils or documentation, uh, you can just check uh, what uh, was changed and uh, just set up uh, whatever uh, labels you need. Like, for example, documentation label, uh, core label, uh, library label, and uh, it will be obvious to uh, understand to what this pull request will change uh, before you will review it so okay and uh, we can automate even package publishing and release nodes generation by using git attacks uh so uh it's pretty useful if you want to automate uh deploying of your project or of your package and uh, you can just uh, push uh, the new version by pushing attack and uh, github actions will do everything else so let me show you something mm, okay i have another project in which uh, we have all automations uh got together uh, let me show some automations and some configurations of them of them okay uh, the first was uh, one is change log automation uh it will use uh just npx uh, tool to call uh, github release notes uh cli tool to generate our uh our release nodes, obviously. So, and it will push it uh, into the releases page, uh, which can be found here. And uh, you can see here uh, the previous re release with the change log. You can format the uh, the you can change the format of uh, this change log. You can rewrite it uh, by uh, rewriting the configuration file of uh, Gren uh, GitHub release nodes generator, and uh, in that case, in that particular case, uh, this uh, automation will take commit messages and just use them for generating GitHub nodes. So, and if you have uh, some files like uh, archives or static files or binary files, uh, you can just attach them into a sets 
uh, by GitHub Action 2. So it will uh, generate a complete uh, page for your releases. Okay, let, let me show you another, another one. Danger.js can automate validating of your pull requests. For example, if you want to uh, validate uh, your pull requests or check uh, some uh, corner cases uh, of uh, formatting your, your pull requests, uh, you can use uh, the to, uh, this tool because it's pretty useful and uh, it allows you to, um, to use uh, GitHub API. Uh, it's pretty complete and you can achieve uh, different uh, statements of your uh, pull request, like, I don't know, uh, current state of uh, um, changed files, uh, differences between uh, current uh, branch and uh, target one. Uh, you can check uh, the description of your pull request. You can check uh, title and comments, comment messages and so on. And you can uh, use even different libraries like Lodash or whatever you want to write automations. So here we use only one LGS, uh, but you can uh, write your auto automation uh, automations. And uh, here you uh, can see how we automate generating, uh, for example, um, task link and uh, some uh, generate uh, some checks uh, for some rules. So, and the last one, uh, the last workflow is pretty common workflow for running uh, pretty common steps like npm ci to install all uh, our dependencies of our project and uh, lint for run linter so uh, obviously and uh, test uh, for running tests and so on and uh, that's it so uh, let's just uh, create new pull request and check what will happen uh, i prepared a branch with a, a simple mistake like missing semicolon here, and uh, if you uh, if you got uh, previous runs uh, like in my case because uh, I prepared it and I tested it before, uh, you will see uh, that uh, in that case we already uh, have uh, some issues. So, but let's skip it for now and uh, pretend uh, that there is nothing here. Okay, and let's just try to create our own pull requests with the issues, uh, with the problems in our pull request title, without description, without assignments, and so on. Let's create it. So, okay, while uh, when we create uh, create our pull request, we will trigger uh, workflows, uh, different workflows, and you can see here uh, different runs. For example, you can see here a not a CI workflow run. And it uh, was triggered by push event, and you can see here not uh, not CI uh, another not CI event triggered triggered by pull request. Uh, so the same workflows uh, can be triggered by different events if you specify them like like that. And we can see here that a not CI workflow uh, will be triggered by push and pull request events. So, okay, uh, so now we can uh, see the comment uh, from Danger.js and it says that we have some issues with our pull request and uh, with, and uh, that's it. And it uh, generated for us uh, a task link uh, from, uh, from, from template. So, and uh, here another fails, we can just see what happened and uh, here we can find an issue with our code. Yeah, we just uh, miss, uh, missed a semicolon. So let's try to fix it. So the first issue is in our code and uh, let's just fix it by adding a semicolon. Okay, that's it. So, and we can write uh, some meaningful comment message like, I don't know, a fix the issue for a demo. Okay, and uh, we have two comments for the one task and one of the comments uh, is, uh, uh, one of the comments has uh, meaningless uh, description. So let's fix it by rebasing them into one particular 
commit message. So, and like that by squashing them. So yeah, here we have, uh, here we have conflict. So let's fix it too. And the uh, word, where is it? Okay, okay, okay. Looks like, looks like nothing, nothing special. So let's continue our rebasing. Uh, okay. And let's continue and uh, remove this message. Okay. And we need to push with the force. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's done. And uh, okay, uh, while our tests are running, let's fix uh, other mistakes, we can just rewrite our title uh, by, for example, reusing the comment message here. So something like that. And uh, just let's use uh, the comment message for our title, okay? And uh, add an assignee. So by adding uh, the assignee or fixing uh, the title, we uh, rerun our, our Dunger JS workflow. And after rerunning it, it uh, will update uh, its own comment here in pull request. And uh, our pull request uh, will be in pretty good state for reviewing it. So um, let's just wait for a second. Okay, for knowing that everything is, okay, yeah. Looks like uh, now it's pretty good. So, and uh, I mentioned the issue with the labeler. Uh, here we uh, have a React grid layout library. Maybe it's familiar to you, but um, if you, some time ago, um, I added an automation uh, to set up, to specify assigned labels for pull requests. And uh, you can see here, you can just add uh, an event triggered by cron uh, and uh, it will uh, trigger our workflow uh, every five hours. So, and uh, here you can, sorry, uh, specify the paths for different labels. For example, here we have a documentation label uh, which will match uh, those paths and here we have a core label and so on. So, but the issue is uh, that when uh, some developers uh, create uh, their own pull requests uh, from forks to this repository, um, our API, uh, Workflows API uh, can't reach uh, their forks and can, uh, can't uh, check uh, what uh, changes uh, uh, it contains. So, and uh, actually it doesn't work for now and uh, I will mention it uh, again in my presentation, but yeah, you should uh, pay an attention if you have uh, an, some needs to automate um, some um, working with different uh, repositories like forks and so on, uh, maybe you will have some issues with that. Okay, let's just continue. So, okay. Uh, what if I want to create my own action? Uh, actually, you can uh, use a JavaScript library uh, to write your own uh, GitHub action. Uh, it gives you an API to access almost everything in the repository uh, from files to, uh, as I said uh, before, uh, to the divs uh, from one branch to another. And uh, so automations are limited only by uh, your imagination. So just use it to create ones. So, and the next uh, way, uh, is a Docker container action. Uh, it's a more complex uh, way to uh, to write your own actions, but it's still more powerful and flexible because you can use whatever you want and you're not limited uh, by using only JavaScript API or JavaScript library uh, created by GitHub. So, and uh, what should I know before using GitHub action? Um, 
it's not free for all so uh it's uh, you should pay for that but uh if you uh if your repositories are public or uh you use uh, you can use your self-hosted uh, runners uh, it will be free for you or uh, it can be free uh, if um, so uh, if it's possible to use it for free uh, if uh, the free plan will see you to you for example if your um, project is not so big uh, and uh, you can just uh, use the limit uh, in of uh, 2000 uh, minutes it's okay so you can just use it without paying for that so and uh, as i mentioned before uh, it's a pretty young service and it still has some problems. For example, I described the problems with a uh, labeler and uh, you can see here uh, an issue uh, which is created a year ago, but it's still open because uh, they have uh, some issues with their um, security credentials and sometimes you can just uh, can't write some automations uh, which is connected to communication between uh, your repository and forks of your repository. So, and uh, I will tell, uh, take uh, you uh, tips and tricks uh, to spend less. So, okay. Um, just run lightweight tasks first and stop them on fail. So uh, you should to prevent uh, running a whole cycle of your automations, uh, like by one NPM command, uh, linter, uh, type checker, or something like that. Uh, you should write uh, the most lightweight command first, like uh, pull request linter, uh, and uh, then code linter, and then type checker, and then your uh, unit tests, and so on, or end-to-end um, -end tests. And uh, after all these uh, runs, you will run your building and publishing task. So it uh, will save you a lot of time. And of course, cache your dependencies, uh, because uh, if you can cache something, you, you can just reuse, uh, reuse it. So uh, here an example for caching uh, Node.js uh, Node dependencies. Uh, but uh, if, you, uh, if your project will uh, produce uh, some kind of binaries or archives, uh, you can store it in uh, some repository manager like Artifactory and uh, download it uh, on uh, each run without building uh, them from scratch. So it will save you a lot of money and time too. So, and as I mentioned uh, before, uh, use self-hosted runners. Of course, uh, if they are cheaper than running uh, on GitHub. So, but I think if you uh, have uh, some dedicated servers, uh, it will be uh, really cheap for you. So, and of course, uh, try to reuse uh, what uh, community uh, has done. So, and uh, just uh, uh, paying attention um, to uh, awesome, awesome, awesome actions repository and uh, uh, take a look on it and uh, go through, uh, through it. And you definitely will find uh, different useful uh, automations and you uh, won't rewrite it at all so okay uh that's it thanks for watching here i have uh, some useful links and uh, i think i uh, will uh, send uh, a gist uh, link into the chat but uh, if you just uh, uh, can scan this qr code right now and uh, achieve uh, the same uh, the same gist file so i'll wait for for some time and that's it. This is my context and context of uh, CSR. So feel free to ask me some questions right now. Great. Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, Thank you. If, if anyone has any questions, they can unmute themselves and ask, hopefully. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, hi, Sergey. Eli here. Oh. Uh, thank you for the talk. I just have one question. Uh, would you consider GitHub Actions as a replacement for CI tools? I don't know, like such as Travis, Circle CI, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, 
it uh, can suit you if you don't have some really complex automations and the really complex workflow. But I think uh, for front-end project, it's uh, completely suitable. Okay, and about CD, like I understand the CI part, but do you think CD is mm -hmm. part of it as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can just uh, write uh, your own, for example, uh, GitHub action for deploying um, Docker images or just binaries or archives or even directories uh, to some place, uh, for example, to, uh, into your service or something like that. Uh, and uh, but in maybe most cases, you can just uh, re reuse uh, what some GitHub actions, so which is written all already, uh, like publishing npm packages, uh, publishing um, Docker images, and so on. Yeah, you de definitely can deploy. And the, uh, if you don't have, uh, you won't find uh, some created section, you will uh, write your own. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Sergey, it's Nemanja. So question for you is, um, I'm not sure of the size of your project and the teams, but do you have kind of estimate on the costs of this? So for example, would you rather run your infrastructure on, on GitHub actions? Is it maybe cheaper compared to hosting your Jenkins server or something similar? Um, yeah, it's a great question. Thank you. So um, now uh, it's ch cheaper to run GitHub Actions. And uh, we have different uh, projects, uh, I mean, in size, different small ones and uh, huge ones. Uh, but now the time of our uh, DevOps engineers uh, are is more expensive than just uh, running it uh, in, on, to, on top of GitHub Actions. Have I answered this question? Yep, yep, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question following on about deployments. If you're doing a deployment from a GitHub action, does that mean you're putting your um, sort of authentication into the repository? Um, uh, yeah, how would you how would you deal with that kind of thing? So yeah, uh, actually not. Of course, uh, you can use uh, GitHub Secrets uh, to store your secrets and to reuse it uh, into your workflows. So and uh, here I have an example. Okay, uh, let me show you the automation again. Uh, so here. I use uh, change uh, change log token from secrets. So if you have an organization in GitHub, uh, you can store your secrets in the special store uh, for secrets, and nobody will achieve it uh, or read it. So and uh, it's completely secure. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I have another question. I, I know GitLab has been encouraging people to do CI, uh, CD mm -hmm. on their platform. Do you know, how, how do GitHub Actions com compare to what's available on GitLab? I think that uh, GitHub uh, um, inspired uh, by GitLab uh, automations and by GitLab CI. And I think uh, they maybe not cope it, but um, uh, they really has expired. Uh, they really have expired uh, of uh, those uh, GitLab CI. But yeah, I think uh, they will um, develop it, or mm, uh, yeah, in, maybe in the same way or in the different. And yes, I know that uh, GitLab now, uh, maybe GitLab CI now uh, is uh, more, um, I don't know, more flexible or. Uh, even more efficient to use right now, uh, but uh, the slide, which I have now, yeah, but we love GitHub. We just love GitHub. <laughs> okay, good to know.
Um, okay, I got one more question. Um, okay. You, you suggested using self-hosted runners, um, but that would presumably mean we wouldn't be using the same file formats, these work, these action formats, we'd be writing, is that right? We'd be writing, uh, rewriting the sort of tasks in a different language. Maybe uh, share or... No, as far as I know, uh, it won't uh, push you to rewrite your, um, your automations, your workflows, because it's all about runners. So it's all about just uh, environment uh, in which uh, your work so workflow so will run. So, and that's it. So how would I run this, say I wanted to run this changelog uh, file on my own machine? How would I run it? Uh, you can just connect your own machine, your own runners to uh, the uh, to your uh, organization in GitHub and to your uh, uh, GitHub actions. And uh, GitHub will use uh, your machines to run uh, the sections. Uh, you- Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So you don't okay. need to write your own infrastructure for running them. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, do you have any more questions? Okay, then I think we'll move on. Thank you, Sergey. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.